शिक्षकें समस्त जन कल्याण निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सत्गुरु ब्रह्म विद्वर इन अवर मिशन the year 2018 2019 we have dedicated it to swami tapon maharaj because it is uh, 125 years of his uh, birth centenary 125 years he was born in uh, 80 89 1889 so mission was taken to do this um so different books of swami ji is being uh, circulated and we have been conducting classes so i chose to do a very small book called guidance from the guru it's a book with just 18 letters written to a householder to that particular family they were recipient of uh, thapon maharaj's letters and 18 of them they received it is nice that they have shared it with us so we will see one of the letters from that book and that letter 14 i mean letter 4 is what i'm taking it up <coughs> he wrote this on 8 11 1951 from tapavan kuti utrakasi it is several days since the letter was received the food parcel arrived even earlier some whatever incidentally swami chanmayanand ji happened to tell me of the dispassion fasting and other religious observances of the couple to whom the letters were addressed imbued with their firm devotion to the godly way of life it is a matter of regret that in sending replies and directions to even such deserving people there is so much delay owing to my habitual indifference hope the old warning not to get worried or vexed over the delay will be remembered swami ji walks in the mountains a bit traveler so for him to reply letters would not be on the regular basis if a letter comes he keeps and if anything people give also that you know like he would keep and when he remembers probably he'll distribute it so he was like that completely indifferent so he says the um, you know like uh, uh, and he has already told them don't expect letters immediately from me it's not lack of affection or uh, uh, respect or love but it is my general indifference now he says goes into the content concentrate your mind upon japa and meditation a schedule which we can follow concentrate your mind upon japa and meditation as a rule in the morning brahma muhurta and night sit in firm posture as long as possible and go on repeating the names of the lord success in spiritual path is it all depends upon us and that to how consistent we are in what we practice please keep this in mind if we are not seeing enough progress if we are not seeing enough uh, uh, growth it means we are not consistent we must be consistent this is sure way to success gurudev has said this so many times and if you read we must in that book swami ji would say success is sure for the sincere so if we are consistent we would definitely be successful so he says here concentrate your mind upon japa and meditation as a rule in the early morning and and night morning and night preferably brahma muhurta brahma muhurta is 4 am in the morning 
for the people living in Himalayas those days the rishis all of them felt because by sunset their life for the day is almost over by 7 or 8 they go to sleep and they don't keep themselves awake like what we do nowadays and so when they sleep by 7 or 8 and you get up by 3 and that's the time they were getting up they get get up by 3 you had sufficient sleep and that that's very important and then they sit for uh, meditation by 4 o'clock or all, all other uh, daily karma they complete it off before 4 and 4 o'clock they sit for meditation that is called Brahma Muhurta but if uh, that is not possible because of different way of lifestyle we have after good hours of sleep when you wake up make sure that you sit for japa and pray every day and definitely it is equally important to do it in the night please remember it is not just in the morning time you must do prayers in the night please keep this in mind it is very important you know why when i go to sleep remembering the lord and taking the name of the lord japa and i doze off it runs in my mind in the night in sleep when I get up, that will be the first thought. So with what thought we go into sleep, we wake up with that thought. So even today, if any one kind of a thought you had and with that you went to sleep, when you get up in the middle of the night or when you get up next day morning, that would be the thought. So doing japa in the night is very important, as important as we do it in the daytime. Concentrate your mind upon japa and meditation as a rule in the early morning, Brahma Muhurta and night. Sit in firm posture as long as possible. And go on repeating the name of uh, na er, go on repeating the names of God. Also meditate upon his form. In the early stages, the mind will be prone to stray. The mind will go away. It will not stay. In the early stages, the mind will go away. It will get distracted again and again. The mind will, will be prone to stray. But don't give up practices. Just because my mind is not cooperating to do japa, I should not give up on japa. So don't give up practices. If one has sincere faith in God and love for Him, the exercise, the exercise can give Him only joy in no way can it disgust him if we love doing it and we are sincere about it the japa can only bring in more joy because i'm happy doing it i'm happy i remember the lord every day remembering the lord of your heart whom you love remembering would only bring joy if we don't have that kind of a love then it would not be so it is easier, that's why we say Ishta Devata. Lord can be in general. Ishta Devata is someone whom you have a present liking. So you have particular personal liking. And so you choose that and that can keep you inspired. Moderation in conversation is a great sadhana. Not just talking. Moderation with your phone. You know, moderation. Moderation in conversation is a great sadhana as far as possible talk of God. Don't pollute your mind with petty talk of love and hate. It will be nice if we can occupy our mind with high ideals and our conversation would be of value. Something noble, you know, something inspiring. The mind should move around in that kind of topics, even when we speak. So he says, moderation in conversation is a great sadhana. So first learn to moderate. Don't have to go on too involved in conversation. Moderate. As far as possible, talk of God. The higher ideals. Greater vision. You know, remembering him through different ways. As far as possible, keep the mind that way. Don't pollute your mind with petty talk. And this is very important. What do we speak most of the time? 
what kind of conversations we have some of them, sometimes it can be disgusting absolute pettiness loftier ideals don't come that means the mind goes on only with petty stuff so he says here avoid uh, uh, do, don't pollute your mind with petty talk of love and hate avoid criticism of other people spend not much time listening to news and newspapers this is told in 1951 sir <laughs> okay 8 11 1951 that time he says don't keep away f i mean yeah uh, avoid criticism of other people spend not much time listening to news and newspapers one radio station morning and evening a news will come there were never 24 hours channel <laughs> what have we done to ourselves today what have we done do you realize how much of nonsense we have allowed to go in and at this point only he says avoid the newspaper and and listening to news avoid i mean you don't need what is the basic of the world you should know and today news is are uh, very very rarely you have news it's paid views you have most of the time don't get fooled they are news they are not they are paid to have a particular view and they push it to us as news so it's a very uh, agenda ridden thing but at that time he was saying keep away yeah avoid criticism of other people spend not much time listening to news and newspapers when we criticize someone out of hatred jealousy etc it is very very unhealthy and that in turn will only destroy us if we have to not criticize if we have to tell something which would be constructive that must be told if it is going to shift the mind to a next level then that must be told criticizing someone out of uh, raga dvesha and all that likes dislikes jealousy all that is very very incorrect avoid criticism of other people spend not much time listening to news and newspapers keep away from bad company a company companionship can drag us into a different way of life which can in turn make us forget our own goal so avoid companionship of that kind for it will upset the mind yeah keep away from bad company for it will upset the mind now and then observe a day of silence these are things he is telling to a householder how much more it would have been for a sanyasi can you imagine what kind of instructions he would have given gurudev so he says uh, uh, keep away i am now and then observe a day of silence eat only pure and sattvic food never eat too much impure or excessive food will put aspirants into difficulties because what goes inside is going to have an impact on the mind so take care eat li limited moderation basically he is only saying that now and then observe a day of silence eat only pure and sattvic food never eat too much impure or excessive food will put aspirants into difficulties see i tell you one of the tragedies i have seen is people don't even know what is sadhana and they think they are on spiritual path what can be more tragic than that can we walk on this path not knowing what is sadhana and i am on the path i mean what are you doing on the path so look at the instructions given keep away keep away from bad com company for it it will upset the mind it will only agitate the mind unnecessary that way now and then observe a day of silence eat only pure sattvic food never eat too much now see we should not give too much importance to the food to the body please understand giving over importance to the body means we are body oriented attached to a form and we can never meditate god who is formless 
attached to a form. How can I lift my mind to formless? Pampering the form, giving in to the demands of the body. And how to go beyond body? And every now and then I keep encouraging to pamper the body. And then I'll go beyond body. It, it, it is contradiction. Pampering the body and to go beyond body is not possible. So body must be kept intact. We cannot keep yielding to every demand, pleasure, comfort the body demands. Play moderation. Moderation. That is very, very important. On some days it is good to eat fruits alone or fast completely. Along with it, it would be better to keep silence and devote entire time to the worship of God. It, this can't be done every day. So he says some days just stay out. Don't communicate with anybody. Just stay quiet. Live with limited food and probably only fruits, you know, just for the health. Along with it, it would be better to be silent and devote entire time to the worship of God once in a while. At least once a month, for four or five hours, commit yourself to complete seeking. Every day is okay, little, little time we allot. But once in a month or so, at least four or five hours. This four or five hours is only for God. You know, keep your time exclusively that way. Reading books of devotion and self-knowledge and consideration of their purport for an hour or two daily will help to lift the mind above worldly affairs and strengthen the spirit of dispassion. Reading good books, spiritual content and consideration of their purport. What they have told, reflecting on them, using the mind to reflect upon the content of what we have read, will help to lift the mind above the worldly affairs, strengthen the spirit of dispassion. Association with Mahatmas is still more beneficial. If this is very important and very, and we have to take all caution here, and in fact, he describes this too. Meeting a Mahatma is rare, very rare. A person who is a Brahmanishta and Shrotriya, who is well versed in the scriptures and has experienced the divine, this combination is very rare. That person is a Mahatma. Because a person who is well versed in the scriptures can be articulate about the experience what they have had as Brahmanishta. They can experience, otherwise that experience would be very hard to communicate, can't guide. Many people who have reached that have stayed quiet. So to find, so he says here, association with Mahatmas is still more beneficial. If we can find a Mahatma, imagine times being spent with person like Gurudev, Tapuan Maharaj, Vivekananda, Ramana Maharishi. Just imagine being with them. What benefit it would be. So association with Mahatmas is still more beneficial. No book or no scripture can offer the same degree of benefit. No book or scripture can give us that benefit. Just think if we can be with Swami Tapuan Maharaj. What can book or anything do being with him? So he says here, association with Mahatma is still more beneficial. No book or scriptures can confer the same degree of benefit. Get this point very clear. Now who is saying this? A person who knows the truth. A person who does not know the truth can swear by hundred things. Isn't it? We can be very logical, we can swear by, I mean, you know, uh, speak about the book and what the book says. We could be extremely articulate about it. But a person who has understood the truth, who has realized, he says association with Mahatmas is still more beneficial. No book or scripture can confer the same degree of benefit. 
بٹ ریئل سادوز آر آف کورس ریئر اینڈ چانسز ٹو اسوسیٹ ود دیم آر ریئر ریئر اسٹل ان دیز ڈیز ان ٹو میٹ ریئل سادوز آر ریئر ریئر ناؤ ان almost vanished at our age <laughs> where do we find people who are so pure genuine so he says here mm, no book or scripture can confer the same degree of benefit but real sadhus are of course rare and chances to associate with them are rarer still in these days in the in this circumstance in the circumstances a study of the works of the ancient sadhus will be something of a substitute for the personal contact what else can be done and we can't find somebody such rare people are not there what is the best thing we can associate with with the books they have so spending time with the books is the best satsang we can have reading their works how they have responded how they have lived all that can be a uh, bring a great inspiration so when we can't find masters like that associating with their books is the next best we can have how many books we have in the mission think For example, Swami Tapavan Maharaj himself, his works, how many books mission has published, how much time we have spent, how many of us have read his, well, at least one book fully. Swami Tapavan Maharaj book, printed, available, we are members of this organization, we see them, maybe we buy them also. How many of us have read those books? Which is the best companionship we can have? When sadhus are rare, genuineness has become rarer, best companionship would be the books. Spend time with them. See the advice he gives. Uh, in the circumstances, a study of the works of the ancient sadhus will will be something of substitute for personal contact what else can be done try to raise the mind above such pairs as pleasure pain friend foe honor dishonor don't fall a victim to all this lift your mind try to raise the mind above such pairs as pleasure and pain friend and foe honor and dishonor maintain equanimity sadhana What is your spiritual sadhana? Maintain equanimity. Maintain equanimity. But all this will be possible. The mind will rise above all this only if the goal is Godhead and nothing else. Equanimity is possible. Transcending joy, sorrow is possible. Keeping the mind balanced is possible. only when god is our goal are you a seeker i think so i think i am a seeker what's your priority god if you are a seeker god should be a priority realization should be a priority is that your priority oh okay no not yet ah then we are seekers on the making not seekers we are on the making the day realization enlightenment becomes our goal that becomes our priority then only we are on a quest only then we are a seeker when that becomes my first and my priority in life is to know that so he says here try to raise the mind above such pairs as pleasure pain friend for honor dishonor 
maintain equanimity but all this will be possible the mind will rise above all these only if the goal is godhead and nothing else if god becomes a priority this is possible if the mind plunges into the thought of god and immerses in it when will it have the time and opportunity to think of honor and dishonor etc when you are highly inspired by something else nobility god and your mind is in it where is the time for mind to be carried away by honor or be worried about by dishonor people glorifying you or people criticizing you where is the time if the mind is deeply involved the mind will not waste its time on all this now he says balance of mind is moksha remember this line in this circumstances what he has explained swami ji says balance of mind is moksha look at the language of swami tapon maharaj look at the clarity with which he is explaining balance of mind is moksha it is god realization how can it be get there first no no how can balance of mind be god realization get to balance of mind and see how it how it can't be let us discuss then it is an experience of mahatma who has experienced this talking it is not a person who knows the books are talking it is a person who knows god is talking you understand there is a difference someone who can talk about shastra not knowing that experience can debate on it no 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 balance of mind cannot be moksha the books doesn't say that it is realization of mind but a person who has experienced it is saying balance of mind is moksha it is god realization meaning if we can reach that state we are there i you can consider that you are there at the threshold so he says here balance of mind is moksha it is god realization it is all transcending peace all transcending bliss so what should be the sadhana try to get the mind balanced joy comes don't get too excited sorrow comes don't get too ex- i mean depressed about it let them come different experiences will come honor dishonor um, you know love hate or various things balance when we practice balance he says balance of mind is moksha it is god realization it is all transcending peace all transcending bliss it is the supreme object of human life a spiritual all spiritual sadhanas start aiming at it perpetual delight of the mind in god principle is its real balance perpetual delight of mind in god principle is its real balance being happy thinking about god making him as the priority once we make the lord has the priority all other things come in it's a very nice letter letter four these i told you know there are only 18 letters but each one is so deep very profound you can get a copy of this book read one letter at a time allow that letter to sink inside maybe you may have to spend 2 3 days on each letter so imagine spending 3 days on each letter and 18 of them are there in 2 months time we would have done a very good revision of this book revision of swami tapuvan maharaj's instructions in a simple english what he has written can definitely transform try and commit this from this camp and there can't be anything more better we can do than to take up to swami tapon ji's letters his works om shanti shanti shanti
हरि ओम श्री गुरु